the rationale and decision-making process you use to determine how many cans of soup, how many bags of chicken, or how many gallons of milk you purchase on a weekly basis can be graphically represented. Why is that important, you might ask? Understanding your decision-making process at different price points helps businesses make decisions on how to price products, whether to advertise, and how much of a specific good to keep in inventory, just to name a few. One of the basic graphs in microeconomics is referred to as the demand curve and is the curve that shows how much of a good will be bought by consumers at various price points. In microeconomics, we often look at the demand curve for individuals. In macroeconomics, we often focus on the market demand curve, which is simply the sum of all the individual demand curves. The demand curve is graphed with the same axis as a supply curve in order to allow the two curves to be combined into a single graph. The y-axis, or vertical line of the graph, is the price, and the x-axis, or horizontal line, is the quantity. Just like in macroeconomics, demand curves slope downward because people are willing to buy larger quantities of a good as its price goes down. For example, you may only be willing to buy one box of cereal when it sells for $5 a box. When it sells for $4, you may be willing to buy two boxes. And when it sells for $3, you may be willing to buy three boxes. The same logic and rationale can be applied to the 12 packs of soda, the clothing, or the movie theater tickets you may purchase in a given week. To sum up, lower prices means higher quantities demanded by individuals. Higher prices means lower quantities demanded. Economics relies heavily on demand and supply graphs. Understanding how they are constructed and work will help you better understand many economic concepts. To think how an individual demand curve is created, we need to first determine how much of a product a person is willing to buy at certain price points. For example, let's explore Jerry's demand for DVDs. At a price of $2, Jerry will buy 12 DVDs a month. At a price of $3, 10 DVDs. $4, 7 DVDs. At $5, Jerry will buy 5 DVDs. $6, 4 DVDs. 7, 3 DVDs. 8, 2 DVDs. And at $10, Jerry will buy just 1 DVD a month. If we then create a simple graph with price on the y-axis and quantity on the horizontal or x-axis, we can plot each individual point on the graph and then connect the points. You now have a demand curve. Now that we know how an individual demand curve is created, let's explore what might cause us to move along the curve. To simplify, there is movement along a demand curve when a change in price causes the quantity demanded to change. Let's go back to Jerry for a moment. What might cause Jerry to move along the demand curve and buy four DVDs rather than two? If you said lower prices for DVDs, you are correct. Altering DVD prices will most likely cause consumers, or Jerry, to buy more DVDs or less DVDs, depending on where the new price is set. The demand curve itself does not move or shift. Rather, there is movement along the curve. As the price falls, Jerry is willing to buy more DVDs. Note that it's important to distinguish between movement along a demand curve and a shift in a demand curve. Movements along a demand curve happen only when the price of the good changes. Demand curve shifts and an entire new demand line is drawn when things like changes in personal income, changes in taste and popularity of a product, changes in price of substitute goods, or population increases happen. Remember, movement along the demand curve is driven by price changes only. In summary, in microeconomics, the demand curve is a curve that shows how much of a good will be bought by specific individuals at various price points. The curve is downward sloping, which means that in general, as prices rise, individuals will demand less of a product. When the price decreases, they will increase the quantity demanded for a product. A market demand curve, which is often studied in macroeconomics, is simply the summation of all the individual demand curves added together. 
A graph in microeconomics is very similar to a macro graph. The vertical axis is price and the horizontal axis is quantity. Movement along a demand curve happens when a change in price causes the quantity demanded to change. This should not be mistaken for a shift in the demand curve, which can be caused by several factors, such as increased income, popularity or preference changes in how an individual views products, population changes, and changes in the price of substitute goods.